Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. Maximising vertical growing spaces in the veggie patch really increases the garden's production. In today's video, we're going to collect materials from around the farm and build some trellising to ensure maximum output from my summer garden. I do already have some trellising in the garden. This one here I've used to grow snow peas and cucumbers. My arch trellis over the back here, I use for Ukrainian beans. The one at the back is where I've grown cucumbers before and I use them to support tomatoes. And this one here, you can still see the remains of my wall of green beans, which was actually fantastic growing here last summer. But there's plenty of other areas that a bit of vertical growing space would really maximise the uh, production in the areas. So the first thing we've got to do is gather our materials from around the farm that we can use to make the trellising. Just here, I've got an old ladder that might need to be uh, screwed together a little bit more. It is looking fairly weathered, but we might be able to get a season or two out of it as a trellising system in the front garden. A month or two ago, I published a video showing mulching and chop and dropping in my bottom swale. And I did a big pollard on this robinia here. And happy to report that I haven't killed the tree. It is growing back. And we managed to harvest these branches, which I'm going to put to use in the front garden as some um, sort of teepee style trellising systems. We just need to gather six long poles of kind of equal length, three and three. First, I'm going to have to trim up these branches. That's one of our poles. I was going to snip these off but I am going to join it with a bit of jute. So having somewhere that can, you know, hold the jute in place might prove to be handy. With this second pole, I actually just cut off the branches a little bit higher, just so that we can use them for tying off points. Those ones are our longest three, so that should be a set. Now, we just have to work out out of what's left here what else we can use. That one might be okay. We might have two different size teepees on the go. These three branches look like the longest and thickest, so we'll be using those. All the rest of this will be returned to the swale as mulch. When I get back here, I'll be clearing the grasses, mulching around the small trees, and then I'll add those branches back in around our productive trees. My jump up made a really good tie to get these branches back. And also my loppers, probably not great for the jumper, but handy. Just here in our materials collection zone, I have an old screen door that originally I grabbed from a second hand place with the intention of using it in my new chicken coop, which has been a couple of years in the building. So I don't imagine I'll be using that in that structure soon. So I'm gonna utilize that as part of my trellising system in the front garden. Also hiding out in my overgrown driveway is a really long piece, about six metres of steel mesh, um, which I'm going to utilise as a sort of a hoop style. I did halve this and use it for trellising for some grapevines around my veranda of the house. So I think the rest of it can be perfect in our garden for a trellis system. Oop. It is fairly long, but once we get it to the garden, we can work out whether we need to trim it down a little bit. 
I find these steel mesh panels are really handy for lots of things. Here I've built it as a containment zone for my dogs. I just don't want them getting out to where snakes are more likely to be and it gives me a chance to keep an eye on my backyard. But on here, I don't know why it's here. I think I put it at the bottom to stop the dogs getting through. I've got a couple of these sort of shorter little pieces of panel. And I should be able to hook these together somehow to make some sort of growing frame. I've got a couple of steel posts here, but I've got many more around the property. So I'll work out what I need before going and gathering the rest. The last piece of chalice I'm going to use today is a panel I've used previously for beans and I'm just going to relocate it. It's just a big rectangular uh, steel mesh panel. Now I've printed off a copy of my plan that I um, showed you in a recent video and I've marked out the spots that I'm going to put each of these uh, trellises. Here's my map. I have kind of marked in some changes because maps are only a snapshot in time really and then you can adjust them. So I'm going to put the ladder here and I want to grow pumpkins. I've got the TP trellising over here for snow peas and beans. This one is my little short pieces of steel mesh panels that I hope to grow melons on. Over here I'm going to combine my um, screen door and my hoop mesh trellis sort of over the top of it to hopefully have the door hold the hoop up a little bit. But I might need some steel um, posts in there as well. And this one here is just going to be the long um, trellising that I'll be growing beans on. After you've drawn up a plan, it's good to check what the reality of the garden is. I've actually got my broad beans there instead of in there as marked in the plan. And that's my last bed where I'm going to put my bean trellis. I'll just be putting it in amongst my carrots and parsnips and flowering radishes. So what I will do, I've actually moved the corn that's marked on here that was going to go here. I've put in a bed just there. So I'm going to do my ladder trellis and my other little melon trellis just in this area here. So it's just one or two huge big radish plants but I should be able to get my melons and pumpkins growing in the exposed area of soil around them. First up is to work out how we're going to use this old ladder that is actually falling apart. It's broken one leg off here and that same piece of timber is no longer attached up the top here. So I'm thinking of detaching this bottom piece here and kind of just cutting it down near the bottom and making those two kind of even. And then use this to prop up the uh, step part of the ladder so that we can trail some melon vines up along that. I reckon that should hold up a melon or two. I've got this spare bit of timber, so I'm just going to pop that on here. I don't know if it'll make much difference, but it feels right. There we go. 
All right, one trellis to put in position. Our ladder trellis, we're just going to hide in amongst all of this radish over there. Now I've just plonked it in the garden, but it is a bit on the wobbly side. So we'll have to make sure we're not sitting on any plant material over there, which we are. There we go. Oh. All right, well, I might have to put in a steel post just to attach it to so that it doesn't blow over in a strong wind. We often get easterlies that come right through here in spring and sometimes in summer. And if this is heavy with plant material, it could blow over. So I'll definitely be adding in a steel post to help that be secure. Now we'll take a look at our short pieces of steel mesh panel. I'm just going to make them a little bit safer by taking these um, end pieces off so they don't kind of get anyone's eye during harvest or any other time. I'm going to just use jute to tie those together. So I need to whip the tops of that one off. And at this end, I'm just going to push these into the ground to sort of hold it. So I've got to take this bottom piece off here. Now I'm not sure how sturdy this one will be. My plan was to grow some, just some small melons on it. So I'll see how it, it goes with that weight and see if it kind of falls over. I'll have to give it a bit more support. Now I did find these short steel posts. So I might actually on the other side of this secure each of the two legs so that uh, at least it's a bit sturdier should it get a bit of weight on it because I'm hoping to grow some sort of a smaller size pumpkin on my uh, ladder trellis. Next on my trellis list is to get these TP style trellises going and to do that I'm going to start by tying the tops together and see how we go from there. Now I'm just using this jute which is a natural fibre and if it breaks down at least it can just compost away or rot away in the soil. I'm constantly finding bits of plastic from all the hay strings I've used in the past so I'm trying to quit using those. All right that's that one tied. Now I'm no expert at erecting TP style trellises. I'm just showing you what I'm attempting and uh, just see how it goes. Oops. I might give those top bits of stick a trim. Now the plan with this garden is to have one teepee sort of on this corner and another one in this area here. I'm going to get rid of this old broccoli plant but I hope to leave this plant here to create some seeds but the second uh, teepee will be over um, this sort of empty growing space here. So before we erect it, I'm going to trim the top of this a little bit because I don't think we need it that tall. Actually, I'll put this one here first and we'll get the second one, which is a bit bigger over there. Now I'll probably be digging in the feet a little bit just to make sure that it's um, nice and sturdy. Mm. That's pretty big. Now I've just taken this down and moved the tie down a bit. It just seemed really big. So I'm going to pop this up and uh, check it out. All right. Looks like I might have to tie it a bit tighter. That one feels a lot better now, a lot sturdier. Now I'm just going to string jute around this one.
we're not really finished with this trellis yet. I think it's going to take quite a bit more work, uh, time I don't have today. But I think what I'll be doing is getting some more little branches and just either tying them on or screwing them on, sort of to sturdy up my triangle at a number of different places. And then uh, this might hold together a little bit better. I haven't really successfully done these uh, TP trellises before. My plan with these two trellis materials is to have this door in the middle, sort of in the middle of the mesh and I'll kind of attach it and I'm hoping that will give the arch a little bit of strength and I'll be holding up the door with some steel posts. Now it's just a matter of working out what length I need with this archway. Now I kind of want the arch to go across one garden bed so it's not going to be very wide so it's going to be up and down really so and the door it's going to be not much wider than the door itself I think so we're just kind of trialing it like this what I will do is just cut this bottom off and I'll poke those into the ground and I'll cut it off kind of just along here and the same with that side there. But um, hopefully that should work. I've just got a couple of bits of wire to attach this but I'll be getting more and uh, attaching it at each sort of hole on the steel post all the way down. Okay so that's enough to hold it in place at least and uh, we'll get it a bit more secure in time. My little peas should be happy growing up that. All right. All right, well, that's kind of how I wanted it. So they've just been pushed into the ground. Then whatever weight grows on that arch should hopefully be taken by the door. And I'll grow a pumpkin or something, probably just a small um, golden nugget pumpkin or something like that. I think I've got some midget pumpkin seeds from a friend and I might be able to grow some snow peas or beans or something up through the middle. Just through here I've got parsnips and carrots which won't be there forever and then more of the radish. What I want to grow there is some climbing beans which will just sort of I'll just clear a strip through the middle and they should get going. Those radishes won't be there forever. And I've laid out my trellis fence just so that I know where to put my steel posts. I've got three of them to go in. So I'm just going to whack them in and get this last trellis up. I've got some little chickens who decide to jump out of the netting at this time of night. They just have a bit of a wander and then I give them a bit more seed and they just wander back home again. Oh yes, you, we're talking about you. Now I might put the middle one in last when I see how these other two line up. Sorry if I step on anyone. Rightio. 
And I'll put another one in there. Now, that one might be a bit lower than this one. I might have to like this one down a little bit more. I might put it lower so the beans can reach the bottom one quicker. And we might move it down so I might have to remove those because they're a bit dangerous. They're all on that top rail there now. And I'll just get some wire, again like the other trellis, and just sort of attach it through the holes in that post and onto the mesh. I find that holds it to the post pretty well. That's my six trellises in place. Some still need a little bit of work and some look a bit weird, but come summertime, I think they'll all be just buried under amazing growth and really increase the productivity of this garden. Make sure you subscribe and follow along to see how it all turns out. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.